Hello and welcome to our webcast MBA Student Insights, International Student at the GSB. My name is Tong Zhang and I'm a first year MBA student here at the GSB. I'm joined by my classmate Artem and Michael, also known by Hopsi. We'll be talking about the student experience here at the GSB and we'll answer as many of your questions as we can. To submit a question to us about what it's like to be a student, just click the chat button at the top of your screen, enter the question, and click send to all panelists. Please be aware that we won't be able to talk about the admission process, the application, financial aid, or the visa process today. Uh, you can consult the website or contact the MBA and admissions office for that information. So let's begin with introductions, uh, where we are from, what we were each doing before coming to the GSB, and uh, what are our goals after the uh, graduation. I'll start. So I grew up in China. Uh, I came to the States six years ago to study journalism. Before the GSB, I was a tech m and reporter in New York. After the GSB, I plan to move into tech and help build tech-enabled platform to help distribution of media content. How about you? Perfect. Thank you, Tong, for the introduction. Uh, so my name is my name is Artyom. Uh, I'm from I'm from Russia originally. Most of my life, I lived in Moscow, and uh, career-wise, before before GSB, I was mainly with Bain Company. So I spent more than four years in management consulting across Europe and also South Africa office. And regarding the post GSB goals, I'm still considering my different options. Yes. Yeah, so. Thank you very much for the introduction. Uh, as Tom mentioned, I'm from New Zealand originally. I was a professional rugby player for eight years before coming to the GSB. Uh, five of those years in New Zealand and then the last three in Japan. Uh, with regard to what I'm, uh, my post-graduation goals, I'm currently exploring a, a career in the real estate industry, which I'll be uh, doing an internship over the summer uh, and hopefully you know, sort of proceeding from there. Hi. All right, so we'll start um, with some questions submitted by the audience. Um, so the first question would be, um, did you guys consider schools outside the U.S. when you were applying? Uh, what was your consideration between U.S. schools and non-U.S. schools, and why did you choose mm -hmm. um, Stanford? Yeah. I'm happy to start on this one. So um, as, I, as I said, right, most of my life I spent in Europe, and obviously I considered European schools as well. Uh, the way my uh, decision process went, so basically since I spent a lot of time in Europe, just the idea of spending some time in America was more exciting to me because it was like new geography for me. And also when I thought about the value of MBA, I thought uh, what kind of like doors and business opportunities the MBA can open for me. And I, I had a perception that American MBA, it opens some doors in America, but also in Europe and in Asia. It's kind of like global degree, while European and Asian schools are still more kind of like one region focused. So from that kind of like flexibility perspective, uh, American um, MBA made sense to me. Yeah, and I, I also explored uh, sort of MBA programs outside of the US, mainly in the UK, so uh, focused on Cambridge and Oxford. I think uh, one of the biggest things, that, you know, I haven't touched on a few of them, uh, the global reach, uh, you know, alumni network was a big one for me. But also the fact I really like the, the two-year program versus the one-year sort of 12-month program. Reason for that, coming from a non-traditional background, I like the idea of being able to spend my first year exploring industries, having a summer internship to further explore that, to see whether that was what I really wanted to do, and then having a second year where you could either pivot to something else mm -hmm. or to further uh, continue down that track. Yeah, definitely. So how about why Stanford? Yeah. I can talk about my experience. So I've been working in the U.S. before GSD, so my choice was both, um, mostly focused in the uh, U.S. schools. And I know I want to move into tech, and I feel uh, Stanford's proximity to Silicon Valley will be a great place. And also, I'm really uh, drawn to the spirit of um, personal reflection and community building here at the GSB. So that was one of the, my main considerations. Yeah. How about you guys? Yeah, so uh, so for me, it's quite an easy question, and I, I think the answer is going to be very similar to what Tong just said. So. First of all, it's definitely about Silicon Valley to a large extent. It's just like a very exciting place to live in, considering how, how many uh, cool things are happening around. And also, uh, I was very fortunate to meet many people from GSB community, even be before applying to the school. 
and uh, I just I felt I, I I clicked with those people, and I I uh, I felt I shared a lot of values with them. Mm -hmm. Just the idea of spending uh, two years in the community of this type of people was very attracting to me. Yeah, I think you know many of the same points. A few that I'd add to that would be one the class size. I really liked the fact that it was the size of 400 a class versus mm -hmm. you know, 800, 900 in some of the other top business schools in the U.S. I thought that intimacy, getting to know your classmates, was, was a big thing for me. Mm -hmm. uh, second, location in California. I mean, and the campus, the amazing campus that we have. You take one walk around here, uh, it's pretty hard to sort of turn, turn away and say that you'd like to go somewhere else. And then thirdly, it was just, you know, the caliber of students that I was going to be alongside. Uh, so for me, coming from a non-traditional background, wanting to explore different industries, uh, I felt that I would, you know, sort of the time that raises all boats, being around people, you know, really high caliber. Exactly. Yeah, let's see with the other questions. So um, how has been the transition to the US style of education been? Is it hard for you mm -hmm. to adjusting from what you used to? Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, mean, I, I can start here. So I, I actually studied abroad in the U.S. Um, for, for one semester back in 2011. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'd had some exposure to it uh, previously. But honestly, for me, it, it wasn't that big of a transition. Um, I feel like I'd done sort of higher education in New Zealand and Australia previously as well. And it was very similar. Uh, teaching styles, very similar curriculum. So it wasn't a huge transition for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I, w I would say for me it wasn't like that difficult as well. So before, in terms of academic experience, I, I studied at LSE, mm -hmm. doing Masters in Finance there. Mm -hmm. And I would say that overall the experience is quite similar. The only thing that surprised me quite a lot is that I would say like the intensity of the education at JSB in the sense that like if, if at LSE, for example, we have one course that runs for all the whole year and then you have an exam then, mm -hmm. here you have three quarters during one academic year. And within each quarter, you have the final exam, you have the midterm, and you have a lot of group assignments. So, like the intensity of the overall process is something that surprised me quite a lot. But I assume that's pretty much from where the the experience and the the knowledge comes from. Yeah, I'll just add one point. I feel the class participation or case discussion is one mm -hmm. something I feel struggled a bit to adjust. Just because coming from Asian culture from China, you're supposed to sit there and just answer questions with your teacher asks you to. Mm -hmm. So that way, um, I feel I need to push myself a little mm -hmm. bit to like um, raise my hand and jump in. When I yeah. Cool. So how about talk about how welcoming do you feel about the GS community to internationals? Mm -hmm. um, I'm happy to start on this one. So I think first of all, um, like 40 percent of People at JSB are from international background, which makes uh, which makes JSB by definition kind mm -hmm. of welcoming to international community because it's it's an international mm -hmm. community. Um, I also would say that JSB has quite a lot of tools to like to involve people and to make them part of the broader community. By tools, what I mean by tools, so like first of all, section right, the fact that we start for the first. Uh, quarter and we we study in this section 70 people who you get to know quite well over the first mm -hmm. uh, over the first two months of the program and then you have a squad which becomes your like inner uh, inner family like seven people who you know really really well and also you have club activity like most of the people live on campus so you bounce into many people and like build smaller communities within the residential area you live in so there are quite a few tools that incorporate you into the broader community. Yeah, echoing a lot of those points again. I think, you know, I live on campus uh, directly across from the street from where we take classes. So, uh, I think I'm sort of one of a couple of international students in my wing. So just there's that forced interaction uh, with, with U.S. students, with other international students, which makes it such like a welcoming community. Mm -hmm. And then I'd also say, you know, the support staff we have in the MBA um, office have been amazing, uh, helping us get wanting to talk to an immigration lawyer, putting on different sort of BBLs or different events that if we have any questions that need to be answered. And then again, the Greater Stanford uh, community, having back to international students has been a great resource. Um, so yeah, I felt very well looked after. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, you guys both mentioned about the social aspect. How about the classroom setting? Like, how do you think the academic experience has incorporated international experience in, into or mm -hmm. integrated? Um, yeah, so I mean, I'm, I'm in a class right now uh, called Strategy Beyond Markets. Uh, it's essentially focused on everything international. We, mm -hmm. we have 
uh, one or two classes on the U.S. healthcare system. But besides that, it's it's all around sort of international issues. Um, you know, we did a, a case last week on Splash, uh, sort of a, a mobile networks with yeah. payment system yeah. uh, in Ghana. So I feel that it has been incorporated in mm -hmm. different classes. Mm -hmm. They always try and incorporate at least a few uh, international cases into the coursework. Mm -hmm. And uh, just a couple of words from my experience. Um, my experience, like most of the classes I'm taking, yeah, I would say they're probably like more tilted so towards the like American uh, companies' cases. But at the same time, I think like most of the cases, they learn, they teach, sorry, they teach quite universal lessons, mm -hmm. which are applicable to the to the global issues. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't say that like I I, I personally consider them mm -hmm. an issue. Yeah, because the knowledge word, the skills, yeah. the framework, quite transferable. Universal. Yeah, yeah, transferable. Cool. Yeah. Since we're talking about the academics, maybe we can also touch upon the, your favorite academic experience so far. I can start off. So I really love um, the group projects that a lot of the classes um, asked us to do. So last quarter, I took the data and decision pilot class. So we are supposed to uh, help alumni uh, company and to do a regression project. So in the whole um, quarter, I worked with four other classmates and like through the whole R model, for me coming from a journalism background, that was a huge learning experience. And I enjoy working with people, working with my classmates, and see a project actually helping a company grow. So that's my favorite experience. How about Artem? Do you have any? Um, I think I enjoy most of the classes mm -hmm. that are heavy on the on the number of guest speakers. Mm -hmm. So in particular, like the two classes on top of my mind would be like the product launch, which is the advanced marketing class, mm -hmm. and also the money and banking class. So the, the product launch one, we had quite a few entrepreneurial guest speakers, mm -hmm. which like every conversation with them I found being very insightful. And also the, the money and banking class, there are quite a few guest speakers from the federal bank. So I, th I think this, this element to have access to the practitioners from the industry, this is something I benefited most from. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of classes that come to mind for me. I really enjoyed organization behavior mm -hmm. in the first quarter. Uh, Frank Flynn, I think, mm -hmm. is one of you know, like the greatest professors going around. And I loved how just applicable all of that material was to daily interactions with people. Mm -hmm. uh, I really enjoyed sports business management class oh, yeah. uh, last quarter. Again, guest speaker is amazing. GM of the Warriors, owner of the San Francisco Giants, you know, just like amazing, amazing guest speakers. And I think, you know, that's one of the, the great things about Stanford is that we have, uh, school has that ability uh, to bring in that, that, that type of talent. And then the class that I'm in right now, a real estate investing class, uh, we've been given, you know, 24 acres in Milpitas, just 30 minutes south from here, having to put together like a development plan, mm -hmm. given an alumni mentor and sort of working through that process, like this, ooh, real world applicable skills, which I think has been really amazing. Great. Let's change gear a bit. Okay. Talk about student activities. So talk about your favorite um, extracurricular activities so far. I can start off because last Friday, we just had the GSB show. I'm part of the leadership team. I was the stage manager. So a little bit of background, the GSB show is a student-run uh, original musical. So we put together the whole script and the whole production. I was in the Fox Theater. We had uh, 1,200 people coming. It was a great production. I feel super excited to be part of that and just feel like be in that experience with your classmate and see the whole thing put together. It's just a great, rewarding experience for me. Yeah. yeah. No. Um GSB show was definitely a big thing and like quite a, quite a success. Like, great job on that one. In my experience, I would say that most of the activities organized by the by the clubs, HSB, such as like entrepreneurial club, mm -hmm. finance club, those activities were were really very really good. And this is this again like connects to the uh, to the point I made earlier on the guest speakers because most of those activities are somehow related to the people practitioners mm -hmm. coming to the GSB. Yeah. And also, a couple of weeks ago, we we made a visit to the Slack office. Cool. which was very quite insightful to see how the organization works on the inside. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, considering how amazing facilities we have here, mm -hmm. just be like tennis courts, like swimming pools. Mm -hmm. well, I, I think You're I, using all that <laughs> facilities. Quite, quite a few of them. Like, not all of them, but like, I'm, I'm doing my best. Nice. <laughs> and I think, yeah, a big one for me was you know, two weekends ago, and we had Challenge for Charity. Oh, yeah. Uh, which... Do you mind sharing a little yeah, bit of Yeah, a little bit of background. Yeah. It's kind of a competition between the biggest, I think it's six or seven uh, West Coast business schools. 
uh, there's a few different facets of it. There's sort of volunteer hours, there's fundraise money, and then there's this event challenge for charity, which is held at Stanford uh, every year. Uh, you know, just amazing events, sports, you know, spelling bees, you know, trivia competition. What, uh, what sport do you play? So I did, unfortunately they didn't have rugby, so I tried my hand <laughs> at American football, flag football, uh, ultimate frisbee, and the cricket. Mm -hmm. was well done. So I, I know cricket from back home, but the other two are more sort of American sports that I, I tried my hand at. Uh, but, you know, also on the cultural side, having the Battle of the Bands, having the dance-off on, on Saturday night, and then a sort of a big event, you know, culminating a bit of a social. So we can interact with other business school students from, from the area, mm -hmm. which is great to build your network, you know, looking at sort of career posts. Yeah. It feels like you two already integrate into your culture like pretty like <laughs> well. Yeah. So how about um, a question on the plan after GSB? So do you plan to go back to your own country? Uh, not only after graduation, also summer plan. I think you touch upon your plans. So what's your thinking? Sure. So I'd uh, so over summer I'm doing splits. I'm doing uh, a global experience. Uh, or GMAX in Europe for six weeks, mm -hmm. uh, and then coming back and doing eight weeks in the US, uh, sort of a private equity, sort of on the real estate investing side. Um, post TSB, I'd like to stay in the US. Um, I think it makes a lot of sense with the amazing network that we have here, and obviously mm -hmm. we get the one year um, OPT on our on our student visa. So I'd like to utilize that, mm -hmm. um, and then make a decision from there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in my case, i definitely going to go home for June, this mm -hmm. summer. Uh, for the second half of the summer, I plan to be in Bay Area, mm -hmm. doing the internship here, and then after graduation, it will be decided. Okay, cool. Um, so when you are looking for summer opportunities or thinking about your career plans, uh, what are the resources from GSB that offer you as an international student? How do you feel supported? by the career management system here. Mm -hmm. Sure, I, I can take this one to start with. Uh, they've been amazing. Uh, the CMC for me has been great. Uh, they probably saw far too much of me uh, last <laughs> quarter because, uh, you know, without having the corporate sort of work experience um, pre-GSB, I was quite nervous about getting an internship. Uh, but they were great. Um, you know, they have a, a wealth of knowledge, a wealth of context. So, go in, you know, do some different activities on the board, mm -hmm. find out what you may be passionate about or an industry which may be of interest, and they reach out and put in touch, you know, you, you in touch with, other, with CEOs of companies. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, you know, they were great and it was a great resource. Yeah, I would jump in because um, there was also an um, office specifically for international students, Lada Lala. So she will uh, organize workshops for uh, all kinds of work visa and the CBT and how can you stay here in the summer or long run. And also she will pass on opportunities um, to specific international students. So I feel um, personally I got take care of from the career management centers. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so also how supportive the student body, do you feel that it's a competitive environment or do you think it's pretty collaborative? Yeah. Um, how would you describe it? Yeah, so I'm happy to take this one. Yeah. Um, I think there is a quite happy balance of the competitiveness and okay. the support within the within the JSB community. Uh, about the competitiveness, I think like by design when you put in one place 400 people with the average amount above uh, 730, mm -hmm. it's kind of like results in some level competition. Yeah. But at the same time, I think like the way the admission process to GSB works, uh, admission committee managed to select people who are quite nice and supportive. So at the end of the day, it's quite a healthy quite a healthy balance that kind of like pushes you and like helps you develop your personal and professional skills. But at the same time, it's supportive enough not to stress too much about the, the whole process. I feel GSB is known for um, like pretty friendly or collaborative mm -hmm. environment. Mm -hmm. I feel people self-selecting in a way also yep. to opt into the GSB experience. Um, so for me, I feel really supported because I feel here, I think Hopsi and Pachapan, we all live together on campus across the street. So people treat you as a person, as a friend first, uh, mm -hmm. like classmate second, or like you put on all the tags that I feel here I can develop a really deep relationship with all my classmates and become a really great friend. So that's something I feel is different or unique here at the GSB. Yeah, so the next question would be, is it common for a student post-graduate um, graduate school 
um, or their goals to change during the um, program for the two years? Maybe you can talk mm -hmm. about your experience, whether what you were thinking of applying, yeah. have anything changed? Yeah, yeah. I, th I think, um, you know, I've had an interesting experience, um, you know, coming in. Obviously, I came in wanting to explore different industries, but I thought that I was going to go. I had some experience uh, with internships in uh, investment banking and sort of more pure finance roles, and I was thinking that I was going to go into private equity and I'll explore that. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, once I got here, talking to people, meeting, uh, you know, alumni, chatting with classmates. I did change, and I sort of pivoted last last quarter. Mm -hmm. um, once I sort of felt, I say, I had a real passion for real estate, and yeah. found that through classes and band classmates. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think it is very common. It's very common for people to try uh, out a new industry or a new function over summer, mm -hmm. uh, and then realize that that isn't actually what they want to do, and come back and put, push the reset button and change the track in the second year. So I think it is extremely common. Yeah, yep. exactly. Yeah. I feel I came into the program really want to move into tech. I want to be a product manager. I want to move into a pure tech company. Uh, also, I feel throughout talking to people, through um, informational interviews, I realized my true passion is still in journalism or publishing. So I want to kind of um, focus on my strength, not just like trying to learn coding and everything, but more uh, work on the media product on their strategy or partnership side so I can leverage my background. So that's kind of a pivot for me. So yeah. do you have anything to add? Yeah, again, I can uh, add a couple of words. So mm -hmm. I, I, think, I, I think, again, like this beauty of two years MBA, it also helps a lot because like the first year at least people like can stay really open-minded without any like time, time pressure because it's two years program, right? And obviously people are coming from diverse backgrounds and they are exposed to new ideas constantly mm -hmm. and that, that quite often leads to the change of the course throughout the, throughout the two years training. Mm -hmm. Great. So we talked a lot about recruiting and career. <laughs> now we can come back. Uh, I think mm -hmm, after you mentioned about Max, uh, Frank Flynn, um, the OB professor, can you talk more about like your interaction with faculty? Like, is there any personal stories or? Yeah. Um, just just overall, I would say that I'm quite impressed by the level of faculty. I'm not only taking classes at GSB. I'm taking quite a lot of classes across the street. Mm -hmm. uh, so I experienced today the the computer science department, and I'm also taking some classes from the department of economics, mm -hmm. and now I'm taking the class from the department of symbolic systems. And I would say, like across Stanford overall, and just in particular, I'm quite impressed with mm -hmm. the the faculty level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. I think I'm taking Tachi Fili, which is another really famous course here at the GSB. Uh, and my instructor, Gary, um, Gary Dexter, and he's really helpful. And he also not only um, take care of the content and structure of the course, and he understands read everyone's journal and have one-on-one -on -one interactions. I think the personal attention from the faculty, uh, especially from him, is something I really um, try to think is really uh, valuable here. Um, yeah, I'll just, I mean, yeah. just quickly add something mm -hmm. to that, too. I think one of the, the amazing things about the GSB and what they do so well is the balance between uh, faculty that are academics and mm -hmm. faculty that are sort of industry leaders. Yeah. Uh, I think they do a great job of having, whether it's so, like teaching a class by themselves or co-teaching a class, having industry leaders mm -hmm. uh, that you've seen before. You know, Joel Peterson mm -hmm. is a big one that comes to mind to come back, and they come back and they share their knowledge for us. So I think that's, that's something that Stanford GSB does so well. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. So our next question would be, uh, what support and guidance do alumni provide? I think you both touched upon when you're reaching out, or mm -hmm. even before GSC, yeah. you met a lot of alum. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I get, mm -hmm. I'm happy to take this one. I think I leverage the network quite a lot before coming on mm -hmm. campus. So like in this in this window between me getting the offer mm -hmm. and me coming on campus. I reached out to quite a few alums. Mm -hmm. uh, I was quite impressed with the first like response rate. Mm -hmm. So quite a few of them were happy to jump on the call mm -hmm. or like meet for a coffee to bounce some ideas. And that I think that helped me to a large extent first to understand like what type of experience I sign up for. Mm -hmm. And also helped me to shape what I want to do long term, like after GSB. Mm -hmm. And uh, just a, an anecdote on this one. So a friend of mine, he's reaching to quite a few 
columns through cold emails. Mm -hmm. And he told me that he 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 was basically tracking how many responses he got. And he uh -huh. said that he got above seventy percent response rate on the call emails, which mm -hmm. I think is quite impressive. So like majority of people mm -hmm. were happy to jump on the call with him or again to, to meet for a coffee. Mm -hmm. uh, coffee considering that they never met the person. Yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd echo that as well. I mean, pretty much to, to every email that I've sent to alumni, uh, I've received a response uh, and, and just been willing to jump on the phone call and have a chat about mm -hmm. anything, which has just been yeah. great. Yeah. Just another data point, I'm with the Asian Business Student Club, and we have a mentorship program. So I got assigned two mentors, and one of them is really, really helpful in terms of helping me to uh, land a job for my summer internship. So actually, my summer plan is um, funding through him, because he's a VC investor, and he knows I'm passionate about media, so he interests me with the CEO. So I feel not only the just cold email, there are structure programs, like a mentorship program that the CMC just wrote out. It will help help you build yeah. a long lasting mm -hmm. relationship, not just within the GSB, also uh, your relationship beyond. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. So our next question would be, what global experience have you had? Well, at GS, um, GSB, this is pretty yeah. funny because <laughs> three of us we went to um, the India global study trip together. Uh, during the winter break, we had a great experience there and uh, got to see India. It was my first time there, mm -hmm. and then uh, the people and the meetings lined up was amazing. And I feel I got close to a lot of classmates, yep. including you too. So that was amazing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So like, so the trip itself, I think that was definitely among my mm -hmm. best weeks at GSB so far. It was quite, quite an incredible trip. Uh, cheap. And this also like brings us to the point I mentioned earlier on the kind of like tools within GSB that helps people to, to integrate into the mm -hmm. community. I think that's a fascinating tool because like for 10 days you travel with the classmates and you really have a chance to get to know them really, really well. So I feel I feel really close to those 30 people. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that was that was very fascinating integration to the community. Yeah, and yeah, and obviously I've got this GMAX coming up this summer, so I haven't had it yet, but it's something that I'm really uh, looking forward to. Uh, you know, a six-week trip uh, to Europe that, that GSB helps pay for and makes it sort of cost neutral for you. Mm -hmm. Where um, are you? So I'm going to be in Prague. Mm -hmm. So really looking forward to that experience. Obviously, love being in India with you guys. And there's no shortage of trips, you know, throughout the academic year that, that our sort of fellow classmates put together uh, that you can jump on, you know, to Whistler with a, with a group over winter break. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I know a bunch of people were traveling over spring break, so there's definitely no shortage of global experience yep. that you can have. Great. Uh, our next question would be, what are the biggest challenges you have faced in your first year? I think I can start off. I think uh, coming from a non-traditional background, also as an international student, I struggle to find my place here because I feel everyone here is so accomplished. I feel, uh, how can I get approved by my peers and classmates? Um, so I feel there is definitely an impossible syndrome uh, within me. So mm. how did I get here? So it took me some time to settle in. And I feel I felt uh, overwhelming support from all my classmates, whether they're um, internationals or American classmates. And I feel, um, I mean, it just takes time. So mm. after the first quarter, after I found out some rhythm and uh, ritual in my life, um, it got mm -hmm. better and better. Now I feel like I can be myself. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, in my experience, I would say that, like, for me, the whole JSB experience is, to a large extent, is a lesson around the importance of focus, and that was especially like tough and important during the first couple of months mm -hmm. at JSB. Mm -hmm. It's still an issue, but there are like so many things happening in parallel, and you constantly need to prioritize, and there are mm -hmm. so many questions you need to answer to, like what classes you prioritize, mm -hmm. like what type of communities within GSB you prioritize, mm -hmm. how you approach your career decisions. There are like so many questions you need to answer. Mm -hmm. And I think that was especially difficult during the first quarter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd, I'd echo that as well. I think uh, coming from, you know, not sit, having not sat in a classroom for a long time where, when I started, I so like you, you know, you're drinking from a fire hose at the start with, with all of the classes. Yeah. And obviously with the quarter system here, you know, it is extremely dynamic. Um, ten weeks, six, seven new classes, yeah. like every ten weeks. So for me, it was really just getting into the flow of things and like you guys have touched on, sort of balancing on the imposter syndrome, which I think everybody yeah. has to some mm -hmm. degree. 
uh, but to all of the other activities that are running in parallel uh, and really come into a realization that you don't need to do every single one of them. Um, so I think just, yeah, getting that balance of the workload with your social life um, and also taking some time to just chill out and you know, see it to yourself. Yeah. <laughs> so we're almost out of time today. But before we go, Ardan and Hafsi, um, any final words of advice for international students thinking about applying to Stanford for an MBA? Just maybe yeah. a couple words. Uh, yeah, OK, sure. A couple words to my side. I, I, would, I would probably say that, um, as all of us mentioned, it's to a large extent about the community. And uh, I would suggest to spend some time like studying the community. I mean, like, meet people from JSB who you can approach and uh, just like try to understand for yourself whether this is the people you want to be around for the, for the next two years of your life. And if the, if the answer is yes, like obviously apply because it's, it's, it's a fascinating, fascinating place to be in. Yeah, I think for me it would just be making sure that you have the best possible application for yourself prepared uh, before you apply. Mm -hmm. I think, um, you know, whether that's GMAT, whether that's talking to current students, reaching out around your essays and how to shape them, doing research for your essays. Mm -hmm. I just think make sure that you're really putting your best foot forward mm -hmm. um, before you apply. Yeah. As for me, my advice would be just be yourself, be authentic. I think only you know what you truly passionate about. Uh, only you know what kind of story you can tell. You, mm -hmm. you are unique as a person. So don't be afraid, be different. Um, coming on traditional background is not a problem international student also be proud of yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. So now we'll wrap up. Uh, thank you both for joining us and uh, thank you for everyone in the audience for participating. You can learn more about the MBA program and the admission process on the GSB website. The application for the next application cycle will be available in June. Thanks again and have a great day. <laughs>